Okay, so we're going to practice solving a few kinematics problems with uh, both equations and using a graph. To me, solving with a graph is easier, but sometimes uh, it may be easier to use an equation. So all of these you can solve using both, right? So I'm going to show you some examples how to set them up, and you can solve on your own. So this first one, I have a poorly tuned Yugo, can accelerate from rest to a speed of 28 meters per second in 20 seconds. So the first thing you want to do is figure out like what your variables are. So if I know that accelerates from rest, if I see rest, that means zero meters per second. So that's my initial velocity. And the 28 meters per second at the end, that's my final velocity. And 20 seconds is my time interval, right? So if I'm doing an equation, I know that I'm probably going to have to use this equation, right? The one that's basically the definition of acceleration. So if I use this equation, I could rearrange this to solve for a, right? I could plug in my final initial in time. So the graph way to do it, this is to me, this is easier, is I know my initial velocity was zero and I know my final velocity was 28. So this is a velocity time graph. So if my initial velocity is zero, my final is 28, it says it took 20 seconds. So down here on the x-axis, I'm going to put 20 seconds. And that means that where these meet right there, that's what my graph looks like. So if I want the acceleration, if you remember, the acceleration of a velocity time graph is the slope. So all I'd have to do is get the slope of that line, which is easy because it starts at zero, but I'll leave that to you. All right, so second one, what distance does it travel? Well, you have two other uh, equations to pick from, but the one I would usually start with is this one, v naught delta t plus one half a delta t squared, right, the quadratic one. And so again, I solve for acceleration up here, so that can plug here. I know the time. I know the initial velocity, so you could solve for this, right? But again, graph, easier, right? If you graph this, we know that the area bound here, right, that integral, the area is equal to the displacement. So slope gives me acceleration, and the area will give me the displacement. So if I want the displacement, all I have to do is find the area of that triangle. So it's one half base times height, right? For any triangle, it's one half base times height. So my base is 20 and my height is 28. And if you solve it either way, you should get the same answer. So the second one is a little bit easier. There's only one part, right? So T equals zero, a car has a speed of 30 meters per second. So right there, that tells me this is initial velocity. At six seconds, its speed is 14 meters per second. So that means that's final and that's my time interval. So I'm going to do the graph first this time because it's easier. So it starts at 30 meters per second. And then after six seconds, it's slowed down to 14 meters per second. So this is easier with graph paper, but this works. But yeah, if you don't have graph paper, you draw ugly lines like that. So there's my graph right there. Notice how it stops at six seconds because it's still traveling, but the problem cut off there. So if I wanted to, again, if I want the average acceleration, that's easy. Slope gives me acceleration, right? And so I'm looking at this line. I know I've got to have a negative slope. And so you could do delta y over delta x. I'll leave that to you. If you're doing equations, it's the same one from before. Vf equals v naught plus acceleration times time interval. In this case, though, you have to be careful because a lot of people just say, oh, 30 and 14, right? And you'll forget the negative sign. But you got to leave the negative sign in because when you do that, when you rearrange this to final minus initial over delta t, you're going to have a bigger initial than you will a final, which means your number is going to be negative. But if you do the graph, it's easier to see here. Okay, so look at, let's look at one that's a little more complicated if you were solving it with equations. So this one, a bus moving 20 meters per second slows at a rate of 4 meters per second each second. How long does it take the bus to stop? So that's asking for time. And how far does it travel? That's asking for displacement. So let's get what I have. My 20 meters per second, that's my initial velocity. And it slows at a rate of 4 meters per second each second. So that's saying 4 meters per second per second which means this is the acceleration. So I'm gonna do a graph first. So it's starting at 20 meters per second and we wanna know how long it takes to stop, right? So it's gonna to get to zero. And I know that it's gonna slow down. I know the slope of this line needs to equal negative four because it's slowing at a rate of four meters per second each second. So if I start at 20 and my slope is negative four, just using 
math skills, I can figure out that this has to be five seconds because with a slope of negative four at 20, it would go 16, 12, eight, what, four, zero, right? So it would be five seconds. Or, right, again, equation, bf equals v naught plus a delta t. I could use that to solve for a. So then how far does it travel while breaking? So again, that area is equal to the displacement. So all I have to do is solve for that area. Or you could use delta x equals v naught delta t plus one half a delta t squared. And you could solve for the whole uh, distance that it travels while breaking. Okay, last one. So I'm picking the probably the most complicated looking one. So dog runs down his driveway with initial speed of 5 meters per second for 8 seconds. And then he's going to increase his speed to 10 meters per second in 5 seconds. What's the acceleration during the second part and how long is the driveway? So there's two distinct parts in this problem. So I'm going to do the graph again first. So the kid is going or the dog is going 5 meters per second and he does that for 8 seconds. So at 8, so my line, my original graph is going to look like this. 5 meters per second for 8 seconds. And then he's going to increase his speed to 10 meters per second in 5 seconds. So if this is 5 seconds, that means this needs to be 13. And he's going to go to 10. So my graph looks like that. Alright, so to get the acceleration during the second part, all I got to do is find the slope of that. right? Or you could say bf equals v naught plus a delta t, right? Really useful equation. So that's easy. How long is the driveway? Ooh, that's a little harder, right? So you can't just solve for using that delta x equation, right? Because that's assuming that he's accelerating. So you would only be solving for the distance right here. In this case, you've got to get this whole area. So what I would do, this is the easier way. I would make a rectangle right here, find that rectangle's area, and then I would find this triangle area and I would just add those two up, and that'll give you the displacement. Or, right, if you're doing this the math way, the equation way, you could do delta x equals v naught delta t plus one half a delta t squared, and that'll give you a delta x for the second part. And then for the first part at a constant velocity, we know for constant velocity it's displacement over time. So all you'd have to do is take this and solve for delta x, and that'll give you the first part, and then you add those two up to get your delta x total. That's a whole lot of work, right? It's easier to draw graphs, right? If you get in the habit of drawing graphs for stuff, it makes it a whole bunch easier solving kinematics problems.